after explaining the Cobb Douglas production function we shall now try to understand the Cobb Douglas cost function since it is the same family of the functions so it should be based upon the Cobb Douglas production function or the demand functions developed by the Cobb Douglas production function and why we are studying the Cobb Douglas cost function it is basically because sometimes it is convenient to work in terms of cost and the factor prices instead of output and factor inputs because output and factor inputs these are physical units whereas cost and factor prices are in monetary units so when the information is in this form we should have a cost function to understand the situation so uh, there are another way of representing the similar sort of situation therefore these cost functions are actually a kind of dual of the underlying production process because they are similar but not the same and they are connected and in the duality theory we understand that how a, a production function is linked with a certain cost function so they that is the cost functions they are the dual and in this case the Cobb Douglas cost function they are the dual of the Cobb Douglas production function now let's start with the standard form of the cost function we know that this is how the cost function looks like and since we have to base our analysis on the Cobb Douglas production function so we borrow the un uh, the conditional demand functions developed with the help of Cobb Douglas production function we did this in the last video and we are going to borrow those values from there that is the conditional factor demand functions on the basis of Cobb Douglas production function this was for the first input and this was for the second output input now we are going to put these values instead of v1 it is v1 asterisk and this also becomes v2 asterisk instead of v2 putting the values of uh, v1 asterisk and v2 asterisk we get these uh, terms here in these square brackets now we do the simplification process where we are trying to separate q over a with its own power here as well as here the power has been distributed to q over a as well as here after this distribution we know that they are same terms before and after the plus sign so we can take it as a common factor and it is written at the end now this is the term we are trying to solve within this term we know that p1 is getting multiplied with this term in the curly bracket and p2 is multiplied with this term in the curly bracket so this p1 can be solved with this p1 and this p2 can be solved with this p2 so we separate this p1 here when we reciprocalize it its power becomes minus beta and here this p2 gets uh, liberated and its power becomes p2 that is the power becomes minus alpha now further uh, we give this beta this power as well so we separate it so this minus beta will be multiplied with whole power that is 1 over alpha plus beta so it will become this and this p2 with the power of minus alpha will be multiplied with this power and the power will become minus alpha divided by alpha plus beta so now this p1 and this p2 is ready to get multiplied with this and that respectively or in a reverse way so p1 when multiplied with this p1 that is this term and that term they are now written together whereas this term is now placed here again here p2 is here and this p2 term is brought close to it this p1 term is shifted to the other side or the other place now solving these two we will add their powers 1 minus beta over alpha plus beta will become alpha plus alpha over alpha plus beta you can solve this and here 1 
minus alpha over alpha plus beta will become beta over alpha plus beta. So this is the uh, first term and second term that we have developed in this step. Now after this we can observe that this term and this term before and after min plus sign this plus sign they are common so they are underlined this term and this term they are same before and after the plus so they are overlined and now we can take them common so overlined term and underlined term both of them are taken as common and this term and that term they are left here and there with this plus sign as it was in this step we have done another thing and that is to pu put alpha plus beta into a box here 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 and there in all the places because we know alpha plus beta is equal to the elasticity of scale so you see elasticity of scale is appearing in all of those places after this we are removing these boxes from all the elasticities and now this looks free of those uh, boxes that we have used for a certain purpose to highlight now we can take the LCM from this term alpha has beta over epsilon beta also has the same power beta has alpha over epsilon and alpha has the same power so we take LCM that is beta raised to the power beta over epsilon and this alpha with the power of alpha over epsilon both of them they appear in the form of a product in the LCM and then we take the LCM of the symbolic term that is this will be the answer in the numerator you can pause the video and see how this symbolic LCM is taken now in the next step we see that alpha this alpha and that alpha they are the same so their powers get added here similarly betas are there so their powers will be added and you can see their powers are added here in the next step we see that uh, we take the LCM and LCM will be equal to this of this term this term will also appear like this after the LCM in the next step we know that alpha plus beta is equal to elasticity of scale here again we can put elasticity of scale and in the next step epsilon over epsilon disappears as it becomes 1 in the part which is usually not written so we are left with alpha and beta so alpha plus beta is further known as the elasticity of scale epsilon now we can leave this here but we want to consolidate the answer we can either continue with the power beta over epsilon or alpha over epsilon but we choose to retain beta over epsilon as the power of all the uh, or both of these parameters for that I what I can do is I can create 1 minus alpha here so that it becomes beta so the first step that I should do is to reciprocalize these two terms that I have done in the next step once I did this I'm going to make this 1 minus alpha minus is already there I just need 1 in the power so for that I multiply it with alpha which has a power of 1 but if I multiply a certain term I have to divide it as well in order to nullify its effect so this uh, alpha is also there in the denominator in the next step I write this denominator alpha below this epsilon and beta term remains the same whereas the alpha term now has this alpha raised to the power 1 with it so the uh, 1 power it gets added into it when we have this situation we can take its LCM the LCM would be this and in the next step we have substituted the value of epsilon which is alpha plus beta when we do this alpha and alpha they get cancelled out and we are left with beta over epsilon this is what we wanted because now we can see this uh, power of alpha is now same as the power of beta with the exception of the sine sine is no problem because I can shift back this beta to the denominator when I do its power 
changes its sign so it becomes plus b tower epsilon the power now both of them have the same power so i can write them together as whole power of beta over epsilon finally we have a term which is now free of any addition it is all set of terms getting multiplied our effort to convert it into this form where no addition is happening only product is happening is to make it adjacent to the Cobb Douglas production function because in the Cobb Douglas production function we have labor capital or in all the inputs and the total factor productivity terms they are getting multiplied they are not getting added so with this effort we have converted it into a form where we can say that all the terms are being multiplied and it is quite adjacent to the Cobb Douglas production function so in this Cobb Douglas cost function the first term that we wrote was of the capital A that is total factor productivity because in Cobb Douglas production function we also have A in the beginning then we have the prices similarly as we had the inputs in case of Cobb Douglas production function so their prices are also appearing here in addition to that we have the additional parameters of alpha beta and epsilon here so this can be further simplified and we are going to do that in the next step in the next step we are assuming CRS which is a very famous assumption of Cobb Douglas formation and, and in that we know that elasticity of scale or alpha plus beta is equal to 1 so we can write it here that epsilon is actually equal to alpha plus beta and it is equal to 1 for the situation of constant returns to scale so now we can put this value of 1 instead of uh, epsilon wherever we had epsilon we have 1 now so you see that the whole power reduces to 1 this also has a power of alpha now this also has a power of beta now this also has a power of beta because epsilon has disappeared from the denominator because now it is 1 this epsilon is also now reduced to 1 so with this uh, it is now very much similar to uh, the Cobb Douglas production function because now it is stripped down to a smaller form further refinement can be brought because we can i that p1 has a power of alpha p2 has a power of beta and this term also has a power of beta so if we can make this alpha has having a power of alpha then I can put it here and this P2 will be adjusted with beta raised to the power beta so this is why I have separated this 1 over beta raised to the power beta so that these two could be combined together and the alpha which was here with the power of beta has been shifted to the denominator reversing the sign of its power now we add these two powers that is 1 minus beta because the bases are the same and we know that 1 minus beta is equal to alpha so 1 over alpha raised to the power alpha is what we have here now you see that this can be combined with this term and these two are already in a position to be combined when we combine them both of them have the power of beta that is these two terms and this term and that term they have a power of alpha so we can write them together with whole power here you can see this and this term has been converted into whole power form and it is equal to this so now finally the purpose of doing this all of it is served because now it is very much similar to the Cobb Douglas production function where we had the output and then there was total factor productivity adjacent to that we have this term in which the total factor productivity is present we had the first factor of production we have the price of the first factor of production with a certain power alpha it was alpha here as well then the second factor of production here the price of the second factor of production beta and again the power beta 
so it is very much similar to the parent cop douglas production function so in this way we have developed the cop douglas production function and we have not just developed it we have developed it in in a way that it is very much comparable with the parent cop douglas production function these were a few steps that we did to achieve this and this is the cop douglas cost function thank you